Hey dad, please give me $50. What the hell do you think of yourself? Get lost. Hey mom, I just love that girl. Get lost. What the hell are you doing in your college? You are there for studies, not for marriage. Take a chill bro. Just give them calcium channel blockers in order to lower their BP. <laughs> so that was a funny part. But let's begin our discussion with calcium channel blockers. As you can see on my right side that its definition include these are the medication that are used to lower the blood pressure. Yes, if somebody is having high BP, hypertensive, aggressive, paranoid and, and due to any other reason the BP is higher than the normal and is sustained, uh, we can say persistently regular high BP, calcium channel blockers are the drug of choice. They work, please note it down, they work by preventing calcium from entering the cells, cardiomyocytes cells of the heart, cardiomyocytes and of course that we can say smooth muscles of the blood vessels or especially the arteries. Can you tell me what is the name of the smooth muscle layer? Yes, tunica media, tunica media layer guys, this work on that. So now we will discuss about mode of action. Before we discuss mechanism of action, we know that Calcium plays very important role as many of the medical and nursing students know about calcium ions is that it is very important for bone formation. It is very, uh, it plays very important role in blood clotting. Yes, blood clotting, blood clotting and muscle contraction. Yes, we have a video on physiology of muscle contraction. You can also, uh, we can say, uh, check that video. Uh, muscle contraction right okay now we are going to discuss about the mechanism of action before that we have to understand the basic physiology of the pacemaker cells in the heart and non pacemaker cells how they actually work so let's let's discuss these things so these there are the channels on the pacemaker cells known as funny sodium channels and whenever there is action potential the sodium ions influx occurs sodium ions flow inside the cell pacemaker cells and make it more electropositive make it more electropositive or we can say less electronegative as the cell uh, membrane as the cell environment uh, cell environment becomes more and more positive the voltage sensitive calcium channels are stimulated voltage sensitive calcium channels are stimulated which leads to influx of calcium and then what happens we know that yes the cell becomes more and more electropositive which further which further stimulate the L-type calcium channels. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this further stimulate L-type calcium channels and then happens, wow, then happens more and more calcium blast inside the cell, inside the pacemaker cell, we can say. So, therefore, and making the cell more and more electropositive and generating, yes, please, action potential in the pacemaker cells. We know that pacemaker cells are present in the sinoatrial node, SA node and AV node. Now, as the cell is becoming more and more electropositive, the, we can say, shifting of shifting of this positive ions or action potential across the membrane occurs between the two types of cells first is pacemaker cells and others are non pacemaker cells through the gap junction we know that cells are having gap junctions for exchange of different type of ions and substances so as these 
ions or action potential is moving or shifted towards the non pacemaker cells of the myocardium we can say myocardial muscles it is becoming more and more electro positive which further uh, we can say opens the voltage sensitive funny sodium channels uh, actually i am using the word funny but they are not funny they are just sodium channels and there is inflow of sodium ions inside the non pacemaker cells which further increases the cell electron we can say positivity and as this occurs we had already studied in the physiology of muscle contraction that whenever a skeletal muscle or smooth muscle is stimulated the action potential shift to across the membrane inside the membrane and finally it reaches finally it reaches uh, towards the t tubules t tubules if you don't know about t tubules you can check our video on physiology of muscle contraction so now we know that t tubules are having sarcoplasmic reticulum around them which are very very excellent source of calcium so after the stimulation of t tubules and release of calcium now the further calcium we can say voltage uh, sensitive calcium channels also open up which further increases blast of calcium inside the cell oh ho oh, oh. ho blast of calcium inside the cell this makes non uh, pacemaker cells further more and more electro positive and this calcium as we know binds on the actin and myosin further helping in cross bridging of them and muscle contraction wow muscle contraction occurs so ladies and gentlemen till now we had discussed that calcium is the king calcium is the king in functioning of physiology of uh, pacemaker cells and non pacemaker cells so now uh, it is very easy for you and me to understand basically what the calcium channel blockers will do they will just just and just block the calcium channels excellent calcium channels are blocked will the cell be able to become more electro positive no and will the uh, pacemaker cells able to stimulate these uh, non pacemaker cells absolutely no and can there be influx of calci calcium ions inside the both cells no so till now we had seen that how the understanding of basic physiology help to understand the concept of mechanism of we can say uh, calcium channel blockers or drugs so similarly on the walls on the walls of we can say blood vessels we are having smooth muscle layer this smooth muscle layer is known as tunica media so the cells of tunica media cells of tunica media for the purpose of vasoconstriction and vasodilation i am repeating for the purpose of vasodilation and vasoconstriction are dependent upon calcium inflow once again the king calcium inflow calcium inflow this is the example of vascular cells present in the smooth muscle layer of the blood vessels blood vessels ladies and gentlemen now we are uh, discussing about the vascular cell so calcium will further bind with calmodulin we know that calmodulin is very important then it will stimulate cam kinase then it will stimulate mlck we had already discussed mlck cam kinase in the video of muscle contraction so briefly discussing act, uh, mlck light chain kinase will stimulate actin myosin cross bridging ultimately actin myosin cross bridging will occur Occur, which will uh, cause muscle contraction if we block these calcium channels will this process occur no will there be any cross bridging between actin and myosin absolutely no so this muscle contraction will not occur and the blood vessels diameter will further further increase do what do you think that whenever we uh, increase the diameter 
of the blood vessel it is known as yes please vasodilation and whenever the diameter of a blood vessel increases the blood pressure falls blood pressure falls according to the rules of the physics so what do you think uh, uh, it will be help helpful uh, in what patient's case so if uh, we already discussed during the starting of the lecture in a funny manner if a person's blood pressure is increasing or sustainably increasing and is hypertensive it is quite useful drugs absolutely drugs these drugs are the initial we can say starting drugs for the use uh, for the treatment of uh, we can say uh, hypertension basically the patients are started with calcium channel blockers these calcium channel blockers kindly note are synthetic drugs which were invented in 1964 1964 uh, is the year of their invention and they are responsible for blockage of calcium channel blockers and 30 to 40 percent 30 to 40 percent patients uh, uh, with diuretic uh, sorry with hypertension are prescribed calcium channel blockers and we can say uh, diuretic drugs we had already a video on ace inhibitors and loop diuretics in that video we had already discussed that the patients with hypertensive uh, we can say behavior or pattern uh, 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 whom the bp is high or rising we are prescribing them uh, di loop diuretics and calcium channel blockers so in this way not only calcium channel blockers are uh, useful for the uh, hypertensive patients but if you uh, uh, we can say think about a moment that heart has to uh, pump more because the blood pressure is more heart has to pump more and heart rate will increase if we decrease bp if we decrease blood pressure myocardium layer obvious has to work less therefore it is also useful in case of we can say heart disorders cardiac disorders especially myocardial infarction because these drugs will decrease workload on the myocardial layer so students we had discussed about the mechanism of the action that by blocking the calcium channels in both pacemaker non pacemaker cells and vascular system these drugs work this effect on the heart kindly note this effect on the heart is also known as negative inotropy negative inotropy because this decreases the we can say contraction rate contraction forceful contraction of the uh, myocardium layer is going to decrease so it is called negative inotropy effect negative inotropy so in the next part we will discuss about the uh, we can say drugs uh, under the calcium channel blockers so now we are going to discuss about the indications of calcium channel blockers so obvious the first one is for what the, these drugs are famous is hypertension yes ladies and gentlemen hypertension or we can say hypertensive crisis when the bp is more than 180 by 120 millimeter of mercury is more than sustained for more than 180 by 120 and after that it is ischemic heart disease in the case of ischemic heart disease we know that there is ischemia of the myocardial layer ischemia of the myocardial layer and this ischemia makes the heart difficult for the myocardium layer to pump properly and therefore they, uh, in order to uh, decrease the workload workload we provide calcium channel blockers in order to work work uh, we can say function of the smooth muscle of the myocardium layer properly so in order to decrease the workload we use calcium channel blockers and after that is 
प्री मच्योर एट्रियल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन प्री मच्योर एट्रियल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन यस दीज आर जनरली नॉट टेकन एज मच एज सीरियस एज कम्पेयर टू अदर हार्ट डिजीज बिकॉज दीज आर जनरली नॉट दैट मच कॉम्प्लिकेटिंग एंड एट्रियल प्री मच्योर वी कैन से कॉन्ट्रैक्शन ऑब्वियस विल पुश और रश द ब्लड इन टू दी वेंट्रिकल्स डाउनवर्ड्स एंड देयर फोर कैन कॉज चेस्ट पेन और अब नॉर्मेलिटी इन द रिदम ऑफ द हार्ट बट दीज आर वी कैन से ऑफन ट्रीटेड बाई यूज ऑफ कैल्शियम चैनल ब्लॉकर्स एंड आफ्टर दैट एक्लेम्शिया एज वी नो दैट ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी सम प्रेगनेंट फीमेल्स फेस ए प्रॉब्लम नोन एज प्री एक्लेम्शिया एंड एक्लेम्शिया विच ऑल्सो कॉजेज लॉस ऑफ प्रोटीन वाया यूरिन सो इन ऑर्डर टू ट्रीट हाइपर टेंसिव क्राइसिस और एक्लेम्सिया इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिवेंट द कॉम्प्लिकेशन रिलेटेड टू द एक्लेम्शिया वी प्रोवाइड कैल्शियम चैनल ब्लॉकर्स एंड दीज कैल्शियम चैनल ब्लॉकर्स नॉट ओनली डिक्रीज द कार्डिक वी कैन से आउटपुट और कार्डिक वर्कलोड बट ऑल्सो डिक्रीज यूट्रेन कॉन्ट्रेक्शन देयर फॉर प्रिवेंट कॉम्प्लिकेशन related to the eclampsia during pregnancy so after uh, eclampsia here comes the scleroderma so what is scleroderma scleroderma is basically hardening of the skin hardening of the skin tissue hardening of skin tissue uh, why itself uh, due to the uh, we can say uh, 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 mitosis of the uh, squamous cells in the skin Raynaud phenomena. After that is Raynaud phenomena. Uh, as we know that in some patients, the nerve endings in the uh, we can say hands and feet become numb. They are not responsive for the uh, we can say weather weather changes and often becomes cold and can lead to cyanosis, which is known as Raynaud's phenomena and cluster headaches. cluster headaches ladies and gentlemen we know that cluster headaches often uh, occurs behind the eyes cluster headaches are also treated by use of ccb uh, calcium channel blockers then achalasia achalasia include that in some patients the lower pyloric sphincter this sphincter pyloric sphincter becomes super tight so we decrease we decrease uh, we causes vasodilation here in the blood vessels of the uh, we can say pyloric sphincter so uh, when the diameter of the blood vessels increase blood pressure falls therefore increasing uh, decreasing the decreasing the blood supply to this sphincter and when this blood supply decreases it opens up the sphincter so uh, in case of achalasia we can use the ccb calcium channel blockers so now we will discuss about the contra indications of ccb calcium channel blockers so now we are going to discuss about the contra indications please note the contra indications carefully and understand them on board AV node disorders do you know that AV nodes is responsible for conduction of impulses from after receiving from the SA node this is SA node and it provides current to the AV node after that AV node uh, we can say send the impulses electrical impulses with the help of bundle of his fibers and purkinje fibers so the av node disorders in case the av node is res, uh, unresponsive we can say hard block hard block in case of hard block first degree hard block second degree hard block av node is unresponsive towards the uh, sa node so in this case we are not going to give uh, calcium channel blockers because it it will further decrease blood pressure and cause hypotension so this comes the another contra indication that is hypotension hypotension uh, uh, we can say decrease bp further then comes the sick we can say sick sinus syndrome yes sick sinus syndrome sick sinus syndrome in this case 
there is very sharp deep, uh, decrease in BP, low heart rate and uh, patient is often lethargic, feels weakness due to the poor pumping of the heart, myocardial muscles and in that, uh, if in that case we give calcium channel blockers, it will further cause low BP. So our main target is to treat hypertension, not to treat hypotension. It will further exacerbate or increase the complications as we know. Congestive cardiac failure, ladies and gentlemen, CCF, congestive cardiac failure, as we know, the BP is already low, heart is feeling pressure, heart is feeling workload and is not able to pump properly. It is also may cause pulmonary edema, which will further increase the complications. So uh, calcium channel blockers are inhibited or we can say prohibited in this case also. So after that is left ventricular hypertrophy, left ventricular hypertrophy, yes, left ventricular hypertrophy, the left ventricle increase its size in order to compensate the cardiac output, in order to compensate or push the blood into the aorta, left ventricle hypertrophy increase in the tissue size of the left ventricle. So the heart is already not able to pump properly and there is a decline in the blood pressure activity. So in that case, we are not going to prescribe calcium channel blockers. Then comes the hepatic injury. It is quite obvious that liver is responsible for so many activities in the body. So in case of hepatic injury, the bleeding is already there and there is decrease in BP. Renal disease, renal disease as we know that the kidneys make erythropoietin. Kidneys are responsible for RAAS system, renin angiotensin or aldosterone system. So long term BP and short term BP are already compromised in case of renal disease. So in order to avoid any complication in case of renal disease and hepatic injury, the calcium channel blockers are not prescribed. In case of pregnancy, as we know that it is very important for the fetus to get good quality, good quantity of blood supply across the placenta and towards the uh, umbilical cord and then towards the fetus. So if we are going to uh, make the patient hypotensive or decrease in BP, it will cause fetal blood circulation uh, in a very expensive way. We can say it will compromise the fetal blood supply. So after that, receiving uh, the patient who is receiving, already receiving, yes please, very very important, beta blocker category, beta blockers. If the patient is already receiving beta blockers, he or she should not be prescribed calcium channel blockers. In fact, the doctor and the nurses need to inquire about the intake of the beta blockers or the history of the patient receiving uh, beta blockers, uh, any hypotensive drugs. So after that is GERD, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease is also contra uh, in indicating in the for the use of calcium channel blockers, GERD, prostate enlargement, prostate enlargement. So till now, we had discussed about the contraindications. So uh, what in the case if there is already lot of calcium channels blockage? If we block so many calcium channels, obvious there will be hypotensive behavior by the patient will be shown. So in order to uh, prevent, it is very simple. It is very simple antidote. Yes, can anybody tell me about the antidote of calcium channel blockers? Yes, it is quite obvious if we are blocking the calcium, let the calcium come inside, let the calcium come inside. So ladies and gentlemen, students, we are going to prescribe calcium gluconate. Calcium gluconate drug is a very uh, useful antidote for the, uh, we can say, uh, complications of calcium channel blockers, calcium gluconate or calcium chloride. So these all were the complications or sorry, contraindications of the calcium channel blockers. So after the discussion of the 
डेफिनेशन कंडिकेशन कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द कैल्शियम चैनल ब्लॉकर्स सो ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ देयर कंपाउंड दे आर ब्रॉडली क्लासिफाइड अंडर द टू टर्म्स फर्स्ट आर दी डाई हाइड्रोपाइरेडीन्स एंड नॉन डाई हाइड्रोपाइरेडीन्स सो गाइज जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस थिंग डाई हाइड्रोपाइरेडीन्स एंड जस्ट एड नॉन सो अंडर दी डाई डाई हाइड्रोपाइरेडीन्स कम्स द इम्पॉर्टेंट ड्रग्स लाइक निफिडिपिन फेल्डोडिपिन we can say feldopine then amlodipin amlodipin is quite 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 very very important drugs all of you should understand and know about this drugs especially the nursing students amlodipin feldopine and then is the nifedipine after that dihydropyridine first comes the superstar drug that is vrapamil quite useful quite, uh, often used in hospital settings vrapamil diltiazem diltiazem and then is the bepidrel bepidrel so uh, remember after that they are having the suffix that is spine and mil spine and mil vrapamil and amlodipine you all at least should remember for your board exams for your nclex rn exam or we can say usmle exam for pharmacology exam so now we will discuss these drugs in the detail by step by step and before that you should must must know that these drugs dihydropyridines act on the vasculature system that is we can say vasculature system include the smooth muscles of the blood vessel smooth muscles of the blood vessels are Uh, acted upon by the these dihydropyridines whereas whereas we can say that non dihydropyridines act on the act on the sa node and av node or the conduction system of the heart or the conduction system of the heart so these are the these are the basic difference between uh, two of them uh, between these two categories that dihydropyridines act on the vascular system and the non dihydropyridines act on the conduction system conduction system of the heart conduction system of the heart so now we will take these drugs and blast through them step by step one by one so after the classification of calcium channel blockers now we are going to discuss about these drugs step by step so first comes the dihydropyridine number one drug is amlodipine amlodipine as you can see on my right side is available in the form of two uh, we can say 2 mg 5.5 mg 5 mg and 10 mg capsules and tablets yes please i will request you to please please use a notebook and note the doses they are going to help you in all type of medical nursing pharmacology exams this is the my basic target to make you aware about their dose more mechanism of action indication contraindication in a more lucrative way and more explanatory way on board do not cram pharmacology i make sure that you learn every aspect if you feel that i am working hard for you and my videos are worth a like please press the like button and subscribe my channel if you not had subscribed my channel so far and also share my channel as much as you can because i promise to make maximum videos on each and every subject topic of the medical nursing and pharmacology field or area so guys continuation with this comes the dose dose is 5 to 10 mg per day please note it down the dose is 5 to 10 mg per day and it is quite useful in case of hypertension in the case of hypertension the dose is normally 2.5 to 5 mg per day 2.5 to 5.5 mg uh, 5 mg per day and in case of children in case of children the dose is less than we can uh, if the children are less than 6 years of age the dose is very less 0.05 mg 
जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव एम जी टू जीरो पॉइंट टू एम जी पर डे इज द डोज इन केस ऑफ हिपैटिक इंजरी और हिपैटिक डिसऑर्डर द डोज इज टू पॉइंट फाइव एम जी पर डे एंड द एडवर्स इफेक्ट ऑफ दिस ड्रग मेनली आर एमलॉडिपिन आर हेडेक and peripheral edema peripheral edema ladies and gentlemen because whenever a blood vessel will dilate these drugs as we had already discussed that these drugs act on the peripheral system on the vascular system whenever the uh, we can say smooth muscle layer of the blood vessels will dilate it will open the space it will open the space between the endothelial cells and cause leakage of the fluid leakage of the fluid towards the extra cellular space towards the extra cellular space causing peripheral edema causing peripheral edema so we can say the dose is to be kept in mind while also checking the condition of the patient so this is the amlodipine then comes the felodipine now we are going to discuss about the felodipine felodipine is available in the market in the dose category of 2 mg 5 mg and 10 mg as you can see on my right side of the screen that is 2 mg 5 mg and 10 mg in the form of tablets and capsules so uh, it is also prescribed for obvious that is uh, hypertension and anti hypertensive we can say drugs uh, in the form we can use these drugs uh, felodipine it is dihydropyridine and work on the vascular system dose include 5 mg per day to maximum 10 mg per day so the main point to be kept in mind while prescribing while educating the patient is that do not swallow do not chew do not swallow do not chew or crush the tablet or capsule directly the adverse effects include headache flushing of the face and peripheral edema myocardial infarction but the main thing to be kept in mind is that the main uh, we can say adverse effect include steven johnson syndrome steven johnson syndrome steven johnson syndrome steven johnson syndrome basically include flu like symptoms flu like symptoms blisters we can say blisters flu like symptoms blisters and skin rash skin rash so this covers the steve johnson syndrome skin rash so guys till now we had seen that this uh, drug fellow uh, dipin can cause steven johnson syndrome uh, and uh, along with peripheral edema and uh, along with cough also cough also this drug please note it down this drug is to be highly highly we can say to keep in mind while pres uh, prescribing or administering with beta blockers nitrates carbamazepine and erythromycin please please note it down erythromycin beta blockers nitrates are to be administered very carefully while we can say giving the calcium channel blocker felodipin then comes the drug that is uh, 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 we can say nicarpidin or cardipin nicarpidin is available in the form of 20 mg 30 mg and we can say 50 mg uh, per ml uh, doses to be uh, prescribed by the doctor indicated for stable angina stable angina pectoris and hypertension please tell me in the comment section below that what do you understand by this stable angina what do you understand by stable angina and when it comes to the dose of nicardipin nicardipin dose is for the hypertension adults for the hypertension adults its dose is we can say 30 mg 30 mg in the form of sustained release capsules sustained release capsules so check the file of the patient that is sustained release capsule this abbreviation is used for the uh, prescribing sustained release capsules
and the while prescribing the nicardipin the renal condition of the patient is should be kept in mind and this drug is we can say um, uh, can interact can interact with nitrates and carbamazepine nitrates and carbamazepine so these drugs were the dihydropyridines and now comes the most important one of the most important drug that is nifedipin so nifedipin is available in the dose of available in the market in the form of 10 mg 20 mg 30 mg 40 mg and 50 mg yes it is very very easy to remember 10 20 30 40 and 50 mg and is indicated for stable angina pectoris hypertension migraine preterm labor and diabetic nephropathy please i am repeating angina pectoris which is of stable form hypertension and migraine preterm labor diabetic nephropathy the dose include for the adults it is 30 mg and for the hypertension it is 30 to 60 mg 30 to 60 mg for children it is quite less that is 0.25 mg to 0.5 mg per day per kilogram per day per kilogram ladies and gentlemen please note it down per day per kilogram so this drug can interact with carbamazepines anti-hypertensive drugs like beta blockers can interact with the hypertensive drugs and we can say carbamazepine carbamazepine is also a anti-seizure drug psychiatric drug antipsychotic drug carbamazepines so these were the dihydropyridines which work on the vascular system and the main drugs we had discussed so now we discuss about the non-dihydropyridines as these drugs work on the assay node or simply we can say conduction system of the heart so first one is very very important that is Vrepmil each medical nursing and pharmacology student should know about Vrepmil Vrepmil is available in the form of 40 mg 80 mg and 120 mg 80 mg 120 mg 40 mg and is available in the form of extended release capsule which release the drug slowly very slowly over the time and extended release capsules are available in the form of 100 mg 200 mg and 300 mg yes very very simple 200 300 and 100 it is indicated for Vrepmil is indicated for obvious angina pectoris angina pectoris uh, or prince metal angina prince metal angina include sparsity we can say prince metal angina it is very very we can say uh, important to understand the difference prince metal angina pectoris prince metal angina pectoris so in this case there is spasm of the spasm of the carotid arteries spasm of the coronary arteries spasm of the coronary arteries sorry spasm of coronary arteries so this spasm prevent the extension and relaxation of the coronary arteries which causes the poor blood supply to the myocardium layer as we know uh, that this uh, rap mill is quite important quite useful for the prince metal angina or unstable angina obvious it is useful for hypertension also so in case of angina the dose is 80 to 120 mg 80 to 120 mg uh, thrice a day three times a day and again educate the patient not to chew or crush the tablet or capsule take it uh, directly before bed time take it directly before bed time the main drug interactions of the wrap mill please note with pen and diary pen, uh, pen uh, on the diary or your notebook about the drug interaction of the wrap mill it include beta blockers erythromycin carbamazepine and nitrates erythromycin carbamazepine beta blockers you can also simply sort out what are the major uh, drug interactions uh, uh, related to we can say calcium channel blockers 
what are the main uh, contraindications what are the indications we used to study with these fundas you know, during our student life so guys wrap mill as we know that is quite important drug and each and every nursing student should understand about this drug so now comes the important part of our discussion that is the side effect we are going to make a list of the side effect of these drugs students now we are going to discuss about the side effects so basically the main side effect when we talk about calcium channel blocker drugs is asthenia that is loss of uh, we can say weakness feeling that i am not having any energy asthenia headache and menstrual cycle irregularities due to increased prl prolactin level is increased due to intake of uh, calcium channel blockers which causes menstrual irregularities in the females after that as we had discussed about the mechanism of action so due to that myocardial infarction uh, we can say myocardium layer sc node av node are not working as to their full capacity so heart rate will increase and there will be uh, decreased contraction of the heart layers especially myocardium and if the heart is not pumping properly then in the carotid arteries uh, through the aorta carotid arteries the uh, brain uh, tissue will not get proper oxygen so it will lead to syncope syncope that is feeling of dizziness or vertigo after that when the heart rate decreases contraction decreases bp is obvious going to decrease bp is going to decrease so these drugs uh, also uh, cause gingival hyperplasia that is uh, hyperplasia of the gingiva hyperplasia of the gingiva the gingiva becomes inflamed or swelled the exact reason why this happens is not uh, clear uh, till now but this happens in the patient who are calcium channel blocker dependent or take frequently uh, we can say gingival hyperplasia after that as we had already studied in the anatomy and physiology lectures that whenever there is a fall in the bp fall in the heart contraction fall in the heart rate the carotid sinuses the carotid sinuses uh, detect this thing detect fall in the bp and this uh, is then this message is sent to the brain this message is sent to the brain and which increases the cardiac output it is reverse whenever there is intake of calcium channel blockers and heart rate decrease this is detected by carotid system in the carotid arteries carotid system so this carotid system send messages to the medulla oblongata medulla oblongata in the brain which causes increase in heart rate for maintaining a balance for maintaining a balance this is called this term is called reflex tachycardia so uh, adjustment mechanism of the body uh, reflex tachycardia so obvious when there is fall in the bp there is flushing of face and increased prl blood level increased prl blood level can cause appearance of breast in the males appearance of breast in the males that is known as gynecomastia or you know, we can say moves that is uh, male uh, breast is uh, uh, condition gynecomastia it is uh, also quite a often uh, seen that the patients who are obese are heart patients or uh, hypertensive patients salt intake is very much high they take alcohol so not only they uh, increase their bp and then take uh, we can say especially the male uh, patients they take calcium channel blockers so this leads to gynecomastia also the patient appears to be having breast especially in the male patients so after that decreased gi motility because gi motility is calcium dependent so these channels in the uh, we can say gi gi mucosa are also blocked which further decreases the gi motility so all these were the side effect of the calcium channel blockers so now comes the most important part of the lecture 
that is nursing consideration or nursing responsibility while prescribing the calcium channel blockers it is carries maximum marks in the question paper of bsc nursing of the we can say gnm of the master degree courses pharmacology courses and mbbs courses usmle uh, that what are the major nursing responsibilities what the nurse should be taught what the nurse should discuss with the medical team what the nurse should kept in mind while giving or uh, we can say administering the uh, calcium channel blockers it is also important for nclex rn exam so first point is to assess the fluid volume status yes please fluid volume status of the patient because these drugs uh, we can say act on the kidneys also can play with calcium ions so fluid volume deficit can uh, also cause further decrease in bp if the patient is already having hypovolemia uh, and is on the loop diuretics uh, beta blockers so hypotension can further increase which can even lead to very unfortunately death of the patient so these things should be kept in mind peripheral uh, we can say check the weight of the patient frequently the main indicator for the uh, fluid balance is weight color of the skin of the patient peripheral edema vital signs hypotension symptoms hypotension crisis uh, should be also kept in mind when we talk about respiratory system the nurse should make or make sure that the mucous membrane is moist and there is no crackling sound crackling sound in the lungs there should be no crackling sound in the lungs so crackling sounds you might have heard uh, looks like this but uh, we can say the nurse should uh, check uh, on the crackling sound or make sure that the mucous membrane is moist and there is no crackling sound crackling sound in the lungs there should be no crackling sound in the lungs so crackling sounds you might have heard uh, looks like this but uh, we can say the nurse should uh, check uh, on the crackling sound after that comes the urinary system and the nurse should check for the color quantity quality specific gravity of the urine students you should must comment in the uh, inbox below that what is the specific gravity of normal urine after that comes the digestive system check for dehydration symptoms low output in, in terms of stool then thrust thrust uh, is increased dry mouth and obvious it is very important to check the vital signs including temperature pulse and respiration um, blood pressure should be monitored frequently check the vital signs of the patient and after that the most important part is to check the SGOT and SGPT SGOT and SGPT are the main proteins which are made by the liver if they are increased for example SG SGOT SGOT serum glutamine coaxial uh, coaxial uh, acetate uh, transferase and serum uh, glutamate pyruvate transferate sgpt their blood level serum level should be monitored and as we know that their normal level for the sgot is 5 to 40 units per liter of serum yes please note it down we nobody is going to teach you like this that is sgot is 5 to 40 uh, units per liter of per liter of serum and for SGPT its blood level is yes please 7 to 56 7 to 56 units per liter of uh, serum we can say nurse should also monitor the platelet count of the patient yes platelet count of the patient if the platelet count is less than less than 150000 150000 then discontinue the drug discontinue the calcium channel blockers so after the nursing consideration now we will focus on the patient education patient education first is advise the patient to avoid any hazardous activity 
harmful activity uh, which can cause bleeding until the dizziness is not a problem when the patient is in full consciousness full control of the body only then he or she should do some heavy activity work with machines etc after that the nurse should educate the patient to limit caffeine consumption caffeine consumption should be in a limited form to uh, and also the patient is taught regarding avoiding over the counter drugs and alcohol intake alcohol intake is the main enemy of many 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 diseases main cause sorry main or many diseases and after the uh, uh, after that this point the nurse should make prop, uh, sure that patient do proper exercise and live a stress free life and report immediately report immediately about shortness of breath swelling of the feet or peripheral edema and nausea and vomiting after that the uh, advise the patient to be in regular in taking drugs some patients as the symptoms improve try to avoid the drugs by self or we can say withdraw the drugs which is also quite harmful for the health status of the patient so these points are to be the main points which need to be kept in mind while discussing about the patient education or health education regarding calcium channel blockers so hi nursing masters what do you think about this lecture was it worth uh, to learn about the calcium channel blockers so if you like my video like my quantity like my quality of the content please keep subscribing keep sharing and don't forget to press the like button please comment in the inbox below i would love to answer your comments as much as i can uh, uh, we can we also promise to make maximum quality videos regarding pharmacology thank you for watching